Lord. As we gather in this place to celebrate the hope and peace and joy and love of Jesus Christ, I would like to just remind you again some of the important aspects of our Christian faith, the practicing Christian faith here at PCIM. First of all, we are all about Jesus Christ. We believe that Jesus Christ was who he said he was, the Son of living God, who came to this earth, this world, and died for our sins, and pointing us toward the eternal kingdom. But I would like to ask, encourage you to get to know him in person, in personal way, rather than theological or conceptual way. Because getting to know him in a personal way makes all the difference in the world. Secondly, we are all about people. Every one of you who comes through this door of this sanctuary, that you have a unique place and unique role in our community and in our world. You are not only the called to, to live as a salt and the light of the world, but in your own unique way, sharing your talent and your gift, you express God's peace and justice in this world. So we are called not to be just peace-loving people, but peace-making, all the more peace-living people. So in our own way, in your unique way, you are called to live out the peace and justice of God in this world. And the lastly, we are all about relationship. Because at the core of Christian faith, it is the restoration of broken relationship. That's why God came to this world. God became human. And I think I truly believe that if you or I want to be a good Christian, the relational aspect of our life is very important. So live peacefully in a reconciliatory way with all your friends and people around you, no matter how different they are. And in this way, we are practicing our Christian faith. Lastly, as we hasten our spiritual journey toward Bethlehem, let us ask in ourselves, do we have a room to Welcome Jesus Christ. As you know, I will say part of it in my sermon. People of Israel, they have waiting. They've been waiting for the coming of Messiah over 3,800 years. And they believe that this Messiah will restore the dignity and honor and glory of Israel as a nation. And perhaps this deeply embedded concept maybe sometimes overplay play out in a contemporary world. But one of the important thing is that when we open our heart and when we are close to where God is, especially in a symbolic way, the Bethlehem, then let us just fully appreciate the privilege of encountering coming Christ, the Christ the child. So brothers and sisters, let us open our heart and let us worship God. I would like to invite Jason Kim to light the uh, candle of love. joy and love, remembering the promises of God with prayer. So 
God loved them from 1 Corinthians 13, 1, 1 from 7. If I speak in the tongue of men of our angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding going watch clanging symbol. If I have the gift of prophets and can platform or be mysterious or of knowledge, and if I have the face that can move mountains but do not have, have, have love, I am nothing. If I give all possesses to the poor and give over my body to hardship, that I may bust, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not bust, it, it is not proud, it is not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs, love does not delight in evil, but rejoice with the truth. It always protect, always trust, always hope, always preserves. <coughs> Let's pray together, Advent prayers. God of all, peace, joy with us, and Lord of love, your goodness is beyond our wise imagination. You give us more than we can think that saints could ask coming to us with impossible possibility in the union of flesh and spirit. Teach us to love the world and all people as you love our God and Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. O shepherd of Israel, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts, show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Let us worship God in spirit and in truth. Our first hymn is number 123, verses 1, 2, and 4.
offer ourselves to him in penitence and faith, we renew our confidence and trust in his mercy. Let us confess our sins in silence. sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Believe in the good news of the gospel. Jesus Christ, Christ, God, forgive us. Christmas tree. 
Some people have glittery stars, others have glow-in-the-dark stars, and others have ones that change colors. I don't know which one you have on your tree. But let us not to get distracted by the beauty of the star. Jesus should always remain the star of Christmas. Let us not get distracted by the beautiful ornaments on the Christmas tree, by all the gifts that we're going to get and the food that we're going to eat, or even by Santa Claus, because that's not what the focus is for Christmas. That's not the real reason for Christmas. Jesus was sent by God to fulfill one of God's greatest promises to save all mankind. Let us remember that when we celebrate Christmas and remember to make Jesus a star of the Christmas story. Often in life, we get too busy or too focused on things other than our faith. We always need to remember to pray and read the Bible and love our neighbors as the Bible tells us to do. So this Christmas, when all is said, said and done, I want us to make sure that Jesus is the star of Christmas and also the star of our lives. Let Jesus' love shine in our lives and may all who see us see the bright star of Jesus shining in us. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for the joy of Christmas and for sending your son to us. Help us to stay focused on Jesus, the star of Christmas and the star of our lives. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 through 6. Oh, sorry. We need to pray before. Uh, please join me in the prayer for illumination. Thank you, Frank. Meet us in this moment of proclamation, God. Enlighten us with your spirit. Motivate us with your word. Remind us of your commands. Challenge us to live in the your world. way. Hold us accountable to do more than sing and pray. In Christ, amen. I will now read from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 6. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them a light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people insult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For the child has been born for us, a son is given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and his name is called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be God. <laughs>
George Frederick Handel's Messiah is certainly one of the most popular music pieces performed around this time of the year. Most recently, the Master World Chorus in New York and New York Fear has performed Handel's Messiah at Carnegie Hall this past Monday, December 18th at 7 p.m. And the ticket price runs from $90 and up, depends on where you, uh, where you may sit. The whole city of New York and its metropolitan area are filled with the strains of Handel's Messiah. Our soul dances with its musical tunes in celebrating the happy and jolly spirit and mood of Christmas season. But you know what? The beneath the often artificial, superficial joy on people's face, people are looking for directions from within, directions for their soul's journey. They are looking for the sense of hope that is imperishable and lasts for a long time. And this is so because deeply from within, we all long for meanings and purpose in our lives. And we are looking for a sense of accomplishment and sense of significance in the place in this world. And we also look for a sense of security in the face of unknown in our lives. As we embrace the fourth Sunday of Advent, Christmas Eve, it is appropriate to reflect on the concept of messianic hope. More super, uh, specifically, our hope in Jesus Christ. The concept of messianic hope began about 3,800 years ago. Throughout the Old Testament, the people of Israel, they were desperately seeking for the Messiah. They were seeking for the leader, who would fulfill all of their prophecies and all of their hope and all of their dreams. The word Messiah in Hebrew means the anointed one of God. And the word Christ we use is derived from the Greek word Christus, which is the Greek translation of the Hebrew word Messiah. The Messiah who would defeat all enemies, who would restore Israel the glory that once she knew under the King David and King Solomon. The leader, Messiah, would restore Israel's dignity as a nation, launching Israel into a golden age of freedom, glory, and peace. That is the essence of hope, the Hebrew sense of messianic hope. Now, has there ever been a time in your life when you had a glimmer of insight about the situation that would become a reality? Going back to music analogy, and that's what overture exactly does in the hand of the Messiah. After the worship, before you come for Christmas Eve service, go to YouTube and play the overture, hand of the Messiah. I listened to it this morning again. It's just, it is a beautiful piece. It is the overture, the purpose of overture is to give a hint of what is yet to come. It is a kind of composer's handers wink to his audience. Have you ever experienced a small sense of what the future might hold? A sense of that would become a reality? Like an overture in the music, the prophet Isaiah's word serves as a definitive hint of what will happen in this world after Jesus Christ was born. 
If we think of Isaiah as a symphony, first we listen to the hint of the melody, to the simple words of prophecy, and then the music gains a depth and fullness. And as we see it in the image of Jesus the Messiah and the Jesus the Christ emerging. So let's briefly look at how the prophet Isaiah described or paint the portrait of Jesus Christ as the Messiah. As we read this morning, the Bani read an Isaiah passage, the first aspect of Jesus' portrait is Jesus is a wonderful counselor. Jesus is our wonderful counselor who comes alongside with in our long life journey. He comes alongside us in times of distress, in times of perplexity and trouble. He is with us as He has been with us and as He is right now with us. And Jesus Christ will be with us until the very last day. When you ever left and felt alone, remember that Jesus Christ, the wonderful counselor, is with you. Many of you probably know the uh, cartoon, the Winnie the Pooh, and one of the cartoon cut, Piglet comes up behind Pooh and give him back hug and said, Pooh, May I ask you something? And, of course, Piglet, Pooh says, What is it? Oh, it is nothing. I just wanted to be so sure of you, said Piglet. In the midst of Christmas carols, the bombardment of commercial jingles, commotions from the, on the street, don't you sometimes just need to be sure that God is there? We say we believe in God, but there are times that when we just need to be so sure of God's presence right next to us or right within our heart, please remember that God comes alongside when we are completely all alone. Second aspect of portrait of Jesus is a mighty God. Speaking with a card game analogy, Jesus is like Jesus has a trump card. He said the, uh, he has the ultimate authority and he can use it anytime he sees fit. He's the mighty God who is with us, but also has an ultimate power and authority over our life and over this world. We often say the burden of making other people happy is upon my shoulder. I carry all along the financial burdens for my family and the burden is upon my shoulders. The responsibility for doing this project and that project and my work is on my shoulder. We often tre tremble in fear and stumble in disappointment under the insurmountable weight of tasks and responsibilities that we carry every day. When we do, the actors and actresses who are called to act according to the Scream. Sometimes forget that, forget about the fact that they are not the author. But God is alone. God alone is the author of life and our future. God says, I am the director and I am the author of your life. I will make sure that you win. You win in this race. I know how you feel terrible about the situation that happened in this world, but I will make sure that my will override of all this calamity 
atrocity and destruction. I will make sure that you claim the victory in the name of my son, Jesus Christ. God says, don't take all the problems of life on your shoulders. Not only this God is the wonderful counselor and mighty God, but thirdly, this Messiah is also everlasting Father. This Father is a loving Father who is everlasting. This Father sees the big picture and see how this day or your day today fits our tomorrow. How this particular incident in our life, however painful that is, how that incident fits into the larger scheme of God's providential plan in life. Our everlasting Father has infinite perspective. He knows how even evil can be woven into something good in, ta in the tapestry of life. So trust God. Trust God and trust in Him our everlasting Father. The last portrait aspect of Jesus Christ as Messiah is Jesus is the Prince of Peace. To many people, peace often means just as an absence of conflict or war. However, Hebrew word shalom, peace, means a lot more comprehensive than just absence of conflict. But refer to the authentic wholeness and what is ultimately good for all people. I think I shared this before. You know the, uh, the word peace in Chinese, hua piang. Hua piang means two things. The first word hua means, it means that there is enough rice for everyone to fully being fed. And piang, the second word, it means that no one is above you or no one is below you. All human beings are equal, fundamentally. And so, Hua Pyeong in Chinese means both material, economical, and relational balance is a very essential in order to bring forth peace in this world. The Hebrew word, like that of Chinese character, Shalom, refers to the condition in which the idea of reconciliation and idea of even contradicting elements of life or the perspective are finally achieving in full harmony. Do you notice that in Handel's Messiah, there are different parts, parts like soprano, altos, major soprano, <coughs> and bass. No single voice sounds alike, but they are blended together in a beautiful harmony. I truly believe that it is in this kind of blending, in this kind of harmony, that you are shalom. It is in this kind of open acceptance of one another we fully experience God's shalom in our midst. It is in this kind of hospitable welcoming of even strangers in our midst that we help others experience God's shalom in our church. It is in this kind of yielding myself with a willingness to be obeyed and blend in that I am shalom first with myself. And it is in this inclusive blending that you are shalom and we are shalom all together. May you find this divine harmony 
in the many discourse of life. May God restore wholeness, joyfulness in your life with God's grace and God's love. Especially we are waiting for the coming of the Prince of Peace. Not only today and tomorrow, but throughout the whole week and in your life. Let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Let us join together hymn number 133. O come, O ye faithful.
have a full house and praise the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Joys and concern. Any joys and concern this morning, Frank? Yes, I wish and pray your know, peace to everyone on earth. Amen. Peace on earth, including Gaza, Ukraine, everywhere. North Korea, South Korea, Yemen, Myanmar, everywhere. Thank you. Joys and concern. I would like to ask to continue to pray for Carol Watson Musiolo. She's she received another chemo and uh, having a rough time to cope with all these side effects that she's going through. So pray for Carol and pray for Alicia, pray for Gary as they all go through this more than a year now. Yes. We had a second grader last year, last year, um, undergoing cancer treatment. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but she's been on crutches and out of school since last spring. She came to share with the Christmas joy on Friday, which is the last day of school, and we do anticipate her return to school. So, me and Layla and everybody's happy for her. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Any other choice and concern? Yes, Cliff. I am sitting here, I'm just struck by thinking about the discord in our country and uh, in the world in general. And uh, something just came over me to offer prayers for, at least for a day of peace and harmony. And maybe that can be extended. Yes. Our country is in discord, and the world is discord. And the one thing we know that is many people, innocent people, are devastated by these conditions and hatred, legacies, um, including. You know, we have some Jewish Jews for Christians, and we have also Palestinian Christians. In the midst of all this, there are so many people who are hurt. And uh, please, when you have a chance sitting around the table and celebrating your Christmas dinners or fellowship, mention that your prayer and encourage people to really be part of in that prayer. Thank you for sharing. And call your senators and congressmen. Email them. Yeah. The U.S. has vetoed so many resolutions for peace. Yeah. Yes. Good. Yes. Uh, just a joy. Uh, we stopped in to see uh, Judy yesterday and very gratified to see that she's doing better, you know, much more lucid than she was, and physically making something of a recovery. So, prayers for Judy. Thank you. Thank you for visiting and uh, sharing the uh, hope and encouragement of Christ. Thank you. Let us join together in prayer. Let us pray. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, everlasting Father and God of our joy, we find ourselves again bringing tender hearts to you. This morning, on the fourth Sunday of Advent and Christmas Eve, we remember the ways in which you offer us joy and love. With gratitude, we thank you for those many gifts. Thank you for the joy of crowded dinner tables that we will share. Thank you for the joy of dogs waggling their tails. Thank you for the joy of single bells and the color yellow and handwritten cards and gift packages under the tree. 
there is so much in this world that sparks laughter and hope. So we thank you for not only making creation beautiful, but making it joyful. However, even the immense joy of this season is not loud enough to drown out the sorrow and the pain and devastation in this world. So in, in addition to our joy list, Holy God, we also bring you our fears, our grief, and our deep longing for peace. For those who are devastated by war and violence, O oh merciful God, sustain their life with your love and hope and peace. For those who carry heavy burdens in their hearts during this holy season, we pray be with, be with them. For those who feel alone and surround them, for those who long for the spark of faith, speak to them. For those who sit in quiet hospital room or a nursing home, comfort them, O oh God. For those who long for your healing touch, heal and restore them. For those who sit in these pews carrying on their shoulders, heavy burdens and news, relieve them, O oh God. O oh God, today is the day which you make it holy. Let your joy be spoken into a broken and hurting world. So keep the candle burning. Keep our eyes trained on you. Move in our midst. Send us your comfort. And when joy feel abundant, or when joy feel out of reach, remind us that you are a source of safety. You are a source of comfort and joy. Like the most loving parents, you care for us endlessly, faithfully, without failure, trusting that we lift our voice together to pray the word that your Son, Jesus Christ, taught us to pray, saying, <coughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare our hearts to receive Jesus Christ again, remembering all God's goodness, let us give our offerings. Accept these prepared offerings we lay before you. 
as praise for the goodness that does crown our days. Amen. Let us join our final hymn, Away in a Manger. <laughs> shall not overcome. And may the love of the Creator, the joy of the Spirit, and the peace of the Christ child be with you all this Christmas and forevermore. Amen. Amen.